The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And, of course, it doesn't matter where you're at as long as you're here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, oh, it says I'm low. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, everything looks here, although we can check, make sure that I sound good. Oh, the audio clip was low. Huh? Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, anyway, uh, so what do we have? We're down uh, 12 or 13 points. On the S&P cash, down 70. On the Dow, NASDAQ's off 82. Um, now, we had, uh, when we left you, uh, we were getting ready for the Russell rebalancing, and the volume was interesting. Uh, by the end of the day, we got 18 billion shares, which is about the same we had on the very lowest day, uh, where we uh, turned back higher in what I was calling a uh, selling climax. Uh, I suspect that on Friday we had a buying climax. It's just going to take a little bit more time to come in. And, of course, uh, we're kind of looking at fund buying also. And generally the way fund buying comes in is that there is, uh, well, for those people that are new, the last uh, two days uh, of the month and three days uh, is generally written in the um, – in the uh, uh, it's kind of a contract for ETF. Um, they have it. It's called a charter. It says that they'll be 100% invested uh, in that five-day range, generally, the last two trading days of the month, the first three trading days of the month. And I've never seen anybody get go to jail or get sued because they didn't, although they there may be something I'm unaware of. Uh, but that uh, means that uh, it's about 80% of the ETFs actually do that. Um, and I'm not unsure why it ever started that way, but it continues to be that way. So a lot of people call it window dressing, but that's when the uh, market tends to be the most expensive because they just uh, move the uh, prices up. Uh, and the 401k guys get the most expensive prices on average. Uh, and as... Uh, what was its name? Barnum. Um, never give a sucker an even break. Was that him? Somebody else. Anyway, uh, 401 folks get to pay up at the higher prices. So, But generally, just before you get into it, you get some kind of pullback. You get the easiest money uh, that's run out. And then the market moves a little higher into it. And then, of course, you uh, pretty much hit some kind of high. And then... Uh, that uh, eh, kind of uh, like a hangover tends to fade. So as we go into uh, this week, um, the question is, and let me see if I can uh, get this up here. Uh, the uh, That really means that kind of Wednesday and uh, Thursday kind of are the beginning of it. Uh, and it depends on the way that these uh, – fund managers actually uh, decide that they want to um, or where they want to get long. Uh, you know, we're going into a three-day weekend for the 4th of July. Uh, and they, do they want to get in early? Do they want to wait and come back on the 5th? Because they can easily do that. They can come back on the 5th and 6th and finish uh, coming up because of the way the calendar fill, uh, fills. But uh, – it's at this point you're always looking for that big kind of washout before they start marking prices up. 
Now, a lot of people think, well, it just doesn't matter anymore. Still a lot of people employed, and that money has to come into the market. question is whether or not the uh, market uh, is, tide is going out or in. But generally, they try to get all the selling done before this so they can mark the prices up as high as possible, uh, i.e., window dressing. And uh, so you get that kind of, uh, yeah, put some lipstick on this pig. Well, let's put some lipstick on this pig. And that's kind of it. So we've got that kind of set up. That's why I suspect that if we're going to get some kind of high, it'll probably be sometime next week. Uh, if I wanted to get long, what I'm trying to wait for is some kind of pullback uh, and let me know where that uh, actually comes in. So generally, you're looking for before next Tuesday, some kind of one day, uh, big day down, maybe not a lot of volume, but uh Again, we're not going to let the uh, we're not going to let people go into this weekend probably easily into what they think is going to be uh, a higher next week. I've said that we're looking for some kind of print around four thousand uh, on the S and P cash before that, but I wouldn't be surprised to pull back more closer to thirty eight hundred only to see us go up to uh, four thousand by uh, you know what are we going to call it the now I had it up and see. Let's go back and look at the calendar here yet again. Okay, and that would be okay. So you get uh, the fifth. We're back on the fifth. Closed on the fourth. Uh, you know, you, you could continue to the seventh. It could. After that, there's generally uh, after fund buying, there's generally a pullback of about one percent on average, both in bull and bear markets. And that's just the 401k money coming in. And, of course, uh, most people don't think about it a lot, but there are organic reasons for movements of money and prices in the market, and that's part of it. Uh, the You want to make a distinction. A lot of people don't understand the distinction between money managers and uh, the uh, uh, fund managers. And fund managers buy and sell uh, generally ETFs or positions or hedge funds, and they try to get the best response uh, in the market they can. But that also assumes that they're going to have 100% of their money in a market. The money managers on the other side of that hedge those positions. They'll buy futures, they'll buy options, they'll do all kinds of stuff to uh, help them if there's any kind of blowout in the market. They'll always have those hedges sitting out there. And, of course, we talked about uh, the end of options rollover where you get a day or two in that where everybody's trying to hedge their positions uh, or has hedges that have to be taken off and new ones put on depending on market conditions. So the, the, there's eh, generally in you the know, first seven, eight days of the month. Uh, you kind of get a much better idea what the market's actually going to do. Then you get into uh, options expiration. Then you get into fund buying. So uh, there are some currents and cross currents that come through the market. Identifying them is a good way to uh, maybe hold your uh, hold your powder dry until there's a better position. At the moment, we're looking for some kind of pullback, and then that would set up maybe a rally through mid next week. We'll be back in a In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 As we return, uh, let's do a little history and then we'll get into some other stuff. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1972, the iconic video game company Atari was founded by Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney. Their first video game, Pong, was the first commercially successful video game and led to the start of the video game industry. And, of course, uh, their uh, arcade games really uh well i guess that's the the arcade game came out i was looking through it couldn't really tell whether or not it was the arcade game that shipped today in 1972 or the pong game but uh all of that kind of stuff started eh, pretty much today uh flash forward to about 1995 or six um of course uh Nolan was uh, pushed out uh, by, I'm going to say 1981 or two, uh, as uh, a few things were going on in the market. It was tough. It was a recent IPO, maybe two or three years. I think it IPO'd 1978 or so. Uh, and, of course, uh, people really, you know, there weren't a lot of uh, tech IPOs at the time, and a lot of people didn't know that it was going to be, uh, some fairly big uh, uh, highs and lows in it. They wanted a stable companies back then. Uh, and, uh, and they for kind of forced him out. He went off uh, to create, uh, what was it, uh, that pizza place for the kids with all the uh, animatronic animals. Yeah, I'm just having a, a uh, blank at the moment. Somebody in the den probably knows. Tiger, what is it? Yeah, I'll think about it. It's a place for kids to give each other uh, lots of their Chuck E. Cheese, yeah. Uh, place for the kids to uh, give each other lots of, of diseases. Uh, only can think of how many diseases in the ball pit uh, was uh, wherever transferred. But um, He actually had that for a while. Anyway, he was thinking about coming back and buying Commodore business machines uh, as they were uh, in trouble, I think, in 1995. Um I wonder if I can even go back and look at the date. 
find it if I went back through my records. I do not know. All I remember is we were in a hotel suite uh, in Chicago, uh, flew up for the day to, to discuss. Uh, we were making a bunch of products for the uh, Commodore Amiga at the moment, uh, and uh, I had just checked in on the email uh, circuit and found out that Commodore had fired or let go, actually, a bunch of the programmers. And they got into it for about an hour, hour and a half in the morning. And, of course, the whole idea was that they were going to buy the company. And the uh, chairman of the board and CEO at that time was a guy named Irving Gould. Uh, and it was very interesting because there were a lot of things he could have done and, and really would have made – uh, Commodore a huge success in business, uh, but the guy literally understood nothing about the computer industry, made a lot of decisions based on what was good for him and not what was good for the company, and proceeded just to loot the thing. <laughs> um, I went up uh, a couple months later uh, in the, I think it was, uh, it's in Pennsylvania? I can't remember now either. It's been so long ago. All I remember was going behind the office. I want to say it was in Westchester. Uh, going behind the uh, office in Westchester, New York. Yeah. And there were hundreds of tractor trailer, uh, uh, not the rigs, the trailers. And all of them were stuffed with Commodore 64 returns, most of them. So a few of them had uh, returns from. Uh, their Amiga brand of computers. But I went back, and it was like going into the Raiders of the Lost Ark, where they just look, you, you don't see the end of the, the building, and it kind of has its own atmosphere and clouds by the end, and it just uh, the fog kind of rolls in at the end of it. Uh, and it really didn't hit me how much money you could make running a company bankrupt until, of course, Kmart. Uh, and some of these other ones uh, uh, and Sears came along and I really understood the play and how long uh, you can sucker other people into a big brand name. Uh, but anyway, I uh, had that meeting with him for about an hour and a half. Uh, all I remember is it was cold and nasty uh, and rainy and I'd flown in from Cincinnati. And anyway, he got about an hour and then they were getting ready to take a break. And I asked him, uh, and this was all about them trying to buy it. And I asked him, uh, just before the break, he kind of shut up. I said, I have one question. I said, how does uh, all the firing of, uh, of the uh, software programmers for the Amiga stuff, uh, how does that uh, or fit into this? And, of course, nobody back then, you, know, you check your email, but did you really check the, the boards on what was going on? The Internet was uh, that. Anyway, uh he hadn't heard. No one knew. I figured he already knew. And, uh, well, everybody broke for about 30 minutes. They came back and they said, okay, it's over. You can all have the rest of your day. And that was it. So I dropped uh, I dropped the proverbial baby Ruth in the punch bowl that day. But I uh, got to talk to him for about 15 minutes after the meeting was over. And that was the only time I met him. But uh, he was an interesting guy and interesting history. Made several companies. And... Uh, Eh, I think that's it. On this day in 1972, I would eventually meet this man for a very short time when he tried to buy out uh, or was going to thinking about buying out Commodore business machines. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, I had a pretty good question. I don't probably spend enough time on it about the theory uh, of the way I trade. So we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, when I come back. We've got another question uh, about uh, super forecasting. And uh, I ran along some more information on that if you're unfamiliar with a book. I have it. There isn't a lot to it. Um, there are things that are technical uh, that I actually love uh, in there. For the average trader, there's not a whole lot other than probably the most interesting thing, and that is exports are incredibly wrong. And I was uh, listening to the audio version of Annie Duke, uh, her uh, Think and Bets 
book from, I think it's 2018 or 2019. I hadn't listened to it for a while and forgot about uh, her uh, explanations about experts. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back. But uh, she has some fairly good ideas. I, I really like that. Uh, well, I listen to the audio book because my eyes are pretty much blistered by the time we get done looking at these screens all day long. So I tend to listen to audio books. But uh, she has some fairly good ideas about uh, uh, listening uh, or I mean, thinking in bats. And, uh, but uh, she had this part in there about experts. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, and more uh, why we uh, a little less charts, a little bit more uh, of the way I think today. We'll get into some charts later. Uh, but I bring up this book from time to time. It's uh, Super Forecasting by Philip Tetlock. Uh, he's one of the few people to ever actually have a real study of how good people are in, uh, in uh, making predictions. Uh, anyway, he ran uh, a study at a college for 20 years and had a lot of predictions and uh, figured out kind of the best way to get a lot of people to come up with some predictions and come up with a, uh, probably the best guess about where things are going to go. But uh, it hit me like a ton of bricks when that book came out and I read it because I read it, I think, right after it came out. Uh, it was a recommendation. Uh, but there's a good part in there where the experts are just terrifically wrong. 
and they tend to be wrong uh, worse than folks uh, would even hazard to think. And you would think that these people are supposed to be smart. They're supposed to know stuff. They have inside knowledge. Some of these folks uh, made uh, predictions on whether there would be wars or not. And they weren't as good as a handful of people living out in the countryside of, uh, of Nebraska. And you got to have to think, why is that? Uh, and uh, I had hit the other... Uh, book that I was talking about a minute ago, Annie Duke's Thinking in Bets. And I'd forgotten about this because I, I'd listened to it before, but was listening to it again this weekend. But she brings up a, a great point uh, in some studies, I think in about the second or third chapter of the book, about uh, them, uh, about uh, a big study. And what they did was they made up a bunch of data. Then they paid uh, a variety of uh, statisticians to go and look at that data and make predictions. So what they did is made up one data set and then told people it represented different things, but of course it was all made up. So the first thing was, uh, and this has been replicated several times, so it's not something that's just kind of a uh, one-off deal. I think there's been five studies, and they pretty much come up with the same thing. Anyway, they had statisticians, people that probably should know more, and they'd have them uh, uh, analyze the data. And the first time they told them it was uh, uh, some kind of skin cream uh, that helped with rashes, and this was the results uh, for the numbers. And you know what? Eh, they pretty much came up with the right decision based on the data, although, of course, this was a phony study. Uh, but then they changed it up and made the data part of a political decisions. Things like uh, guns and gun control and crime and a lot of other stuff. And they found out that not only uh, did the people that are supposed to know the best, the statisticians, uh, did not only did they do poorly, they did well. They the the smarter they were, the worse they actually did. The more they knew about the data, the more that they actually got it wrong, and purposely got it wrong. And uh, driving to that outcome uh, is interesting. But uh, every time you see these folks, and they all tell you that. Uh, that uh, inflation is transitory, we don't see this or that or the other. Just remember, those folks that are telling you that are probably worse off in making predictions than some guy that you bumble into uh, in the middle of nowhere, uh, than somebody that has lots of high education. Anyway, uh, what they did find out was that when they made it political, uh, it made it, actually the people didn't find better uh, results. They actually found out and did ways to make it look more uh, as what they believed in. Um, so uh, beware of the uh, of the guy that actually tells you he knows it all. And the smarter they are, the harder it is to actually uh, apply actual science. And there's a couple of things going on in. Uh, uh, the narrative of uh, the press in the United States where they, people really couldn't get it that wrong, could they? Well, yes, they can and they do, uh, so watch out for it. But uh, that's it. Now, another thing, uh, so I disdain just about anybody that tells me anything that says they're an expert because generally other people are better off at telling us that. And there's a variety of reasons. I think uh, one of the reasons that uh, you may have an edge on the stock market is you don't live in New York City. Uh, all your kids don't go to the same school. Uh, you don't all vote the same way. There's a lot of things uh, that give you an advantage of being able to look out there if you can and be dispassionate about uh, why things go higher and lower and just look at things going higher and lower. Now, one of the other questions I had today uh, just before the show was uh, one of the wisdom of crowds um, indicators that I put in the newsletter each day. And this goes back to, I think, about 1900 uh, from a, a, a scientist named uh, uh, Galton. 
who went to a, a country fair in England, I think it was about 1902 or three, and saw them having a raffle uh, for a uh, steer. I think the steer was like 800 pounds or something. Uh, anyway, uh, everybody had to uh, guess the weight of the steer. And, you know, some people guessed five pounds. Some people guessed 2,000 pounds. And the closest guess uh, was off like 50 pounds. But the average of all the guesses was only off like, I think, 10 or 11 pounds. So the average of the guesses was better than the closest guess of any individual. So in my newsletter each morning, I have kind of a wisdom of the crowd charts where I put a lot together. And uh, whether or not it's the, uh, it's the moving average or short-term moving average or displaced moving average of uh, the 26 different sectors in the market or uh, the TD9s, which can be quite noisy. Uh, when I put them all together, you tend to get a much better view. And uh, in machine learning, it's called boosting and bagging, uh, sometimes called ensemble methods. They're all kind of in that same kind of area. But uh, there is a kind of wisdom to the crowds. Uh, if you haven't ever read this book, The Wisdom of Crowds, I think it's uh, another must read for a trader after you read some of the other ones that I put in the newsletter every day. But uh, all these are probably good, uh, good food for the mind uh, if you're trying to figure out the way I think about the markets. And that is uh, try to think of them as a whole, then focus in on the individual stocks. But uh, anyway, uh, the wisdom of crowds is nothing more than everybody's big guess and take the average. And it's uh, generally about 80 uh, percent is going to be better uh, than any in uh, than in the I can't even say it, any individual guess. And if you go in and take uh, first year statistics, uh, most uh, teachers these days will put a gallon jar and put it full of marbles or M&Ms or something like that. And everybody in the class has to guess at how many are in there. And they show that uh, once you get past about 25 people, with marbles anyway, the uh, standard uh, kind of marble, uh, the, uh, the average of the guesses is always better than the, uh, any, or the closest individual guess. So uh, wisdom of the crowds, uh, thinking bets, lot of what I think of out there, but uh, I tend to uh, use uh, indicators collectively instead of individually. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are 
China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, and we're down four or five points uh, on the S&P cash. Dow's down 25, uh, Nasdaq's down 62. Uh, we've got uh, another Tiger Dollar special. And if you would like either of my newsletters or subscribe to Art of Timing the Trade Chart, it's a great time to uh, buy a few Tiger Dollars and use it toward my newsletters. Just a gentle reminder. 877 uh, Okay. Uh, do I have anything else? Is it broken? Okay, let's try reloading it here, and then we'll get to it. Anyway, some great books there uh, if you want to do a little bit more thinking than less. Okay, let's close that. Okay, and it reopened. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can be wrong. Okay. Okay. Okay, we answered that, I think. Uh, but if you have more questions, any of my subscribers or any of the listeners, if I don't, uh, I'm not uh, incredibly verbose for typing. And I'm generally typing all day already. Uh, but uh, that'll be it. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, we wanted to go through some uh, charts out here. <laughs> Tetlock was wrong in 2016. Okay. Um, been looking at some uh, charts out here that held some lows. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some of these other ones. I wanted to see how they were doing today, uh, mostly because uh, they found some lows. Um, I don't know what the stock is. Let's see. Let me redry it here. So we may. Black Knight Ordinary Shares. Um, we had, you know, had some charts actually make and test some lows. And this one I felt very uh, interested in just because of the test of the previous low on incredibly lighter volume. And a lot of times I use the show to get to stocks that I do not have the time to get to myself. Uh, provides integrated software data and analytics solutions in North America. Software segments include software and hosting solutions. Uh, uh, MSP software is a service application for mortgage, home equity loans, and lines of credit. Uh, but anyway, you had a uh, 10 million share day back on May 4th, 6222. Got into it with 855,000, 10% of that, and you got a bounce. Now you're up to this gap down that goes back to the 10th. So maybe you want to be out today. But uh, uh, on Wyckoff style trades, where you uh, come in and you try to test, uh, you try to buy lows on lighter volume. It was an interesting one. Bristol Myers Squibb had been hanging up here at the highs. I wanted to see what this one was doing today. Uh, you wanted probably something in the neighborhood of 22 million shares when it broke through the highs. You got about seven and a half million shares 
so far today. So wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. If you're uh, into uh, what is that? Yeah, uh, yeah, wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Yeah, wimpy, wimpy, wimpy so far today. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on that one. Uh, C D E V. Um, now this one I wanted to see whether or not it made a low today. About the same energy on the way up and the way down. The Centennial Resource Development C D E V had a 22 million, 23 million share low on May 20th, six dollars 37 cents. Uh, so you come into it with uh, a high of about 13 and a half million. Well. Yeah, 13 and a half million shares. You could call it maybe 15 million shares, but still 7 million shares lighter. Um, there aren't a lot of great stocks out here, but there are a lot that are uh, giving uh, more than uh, kind of vague hand signals on whether or not they found at least temporary lows. Cleveland Cliffs, which is kind of interesting, um, it had more of, and we were talking last week about the rule of alternation. Much better example here where you have pretty much a straight move higher to 3404, and then you get the ABC on the way back down. Um, so just you know, just more to think about in that rule of alternation from Prechter's uh, system, which is I think is the only good thing I got out of it. Uh, but anyway, Cleveland Cliffs, $15.81, 35 million shares. For that January 24th low, you got into it with 20 million shares. Energy on the last leg down was a little bit more, but not as bad as uh, as it could be. So maybe there's something out here. It's off a little bit. Uh, maybe you get one more retest down there at about 15 bucks. But uh, very interesting to see those at the lows, seeing volume start to actually dry up. Uh, Cummings, eh, didn't really, eh, yeah, about the same volume. So I'll take that off my list. Delta Airlines, another one out here. Uh, let me get rid of that. Uh, 877-927-6648, by the way, as you decide to buy some Tiger Dollars and subscribe to my newsletters or the Art of Timing with Trade Charts. Uh, Delta Airlines, another one with a fairly decent test of the lows. It's not jumping right off, but again, I said... Uh, you know, these things did kind of come down with very interesting energy. March 8th, $29.75. He had uh, 35 million shares. And what did you get? He had 29 million shares. You dropped by about $6 million. Uh, you're back kind of trying to fill this double gap out here. But uh, could it be a whole lot worse? Yeah, it could. It could have come in with extensively more volume. Um, some of the other ones out here on a little longer time frame, uh, John Deere, uh, which I kind of liked a lot of this uh, farming ag thing, which I don't know if it's giving the signals today, gapped up on February 19th of 2021. And you came into it with 4 million shares. Uh, when you go back to that gap higher, it went up on about 4.8 million shares. So I thought maybe there'd be a little bit more, mostly because of this high volume low on May 20th. That had 8.8 .8 million shares. You only had four. So you got a little bit of a, a bounce here. Um, could you be finding some decent lows? Well, if people start starving, I imagine John Deere will probably continue to do well. Uh, when we get into the gold miners, uh, let's go back here a little bit. Um, you are still kind of hanging out. Well, this is the dust, which is the reverse. Um, probably the only good thing is that you did come in to the previous high. This is May 12th, $18.93 with 5.3 million shares. Got into it with uh, 2.6 million shares. So pretty weak down here. Energy is about the same on the way up, on the way down. But uh, not really backing off that other side either. Uh, inside day on Friday and uh, today, kind of a coach. We'll be back in a minute.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. We wrap up yet another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. Again, uh, just a gentle reminder. I don't know what it'll be, what you do, but maybe uh, you'll be uh, washing the dishes or turn a, a light on, and uh, you'll think about it tonight. You'll go buy some Tiger Dollars and consider uh, one of my two newsletters or the art of timing the trade charts. Uh, let's see what else do we have out here. Um uh, Question, oh, about Nike uh, on earnings tonight. I probably wanted to go back and look a little bit more about that here just to make sure. But, yes, it is tonight along with Jeffries and uh, a few others. Let's see if there's anything tomorrow morning. Uh, nothing tomorrow morning of note. Tomorrow night, yeah, same thing. Wednesday, General Mills, Bed Bath & Below. Uh, let's see if anything we have on Wednesday night. I don't think much. Uh, anyway, you've got